Welcome back. Fish, we catch them, we eat them, and occasionally watch them in aquariums, but they can also tell us things. Right, they can reveal the health of our ecosystem, which is why there are those out there who count fish for a living, a, a fish census, if you will. And I got the chance to help with that census. We, we waded through the waters of Cibolo Creek at Natural Bridge Caverns to see what it's all about. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can get. We had one earlier, but he got away. Yeah. Yep. When it's 100 degrees, a dip in a creek ain't a bad thing. But in this case, it's important research. It's a real life science experiment. I love it. Yeah, that's right, man. It is. Glad y'all are here to participate in it. There you go. Come on in. Let's go all the way in. All right, let's lift it up. Okay. All right, a lot of little guys. But it's not what most of us are used to when it comes to fishing. There's no pole. It's a seine that we're using. Surprisingly, in the drought-stricken spring fed Cibolo Creek, there's quite a bit of fish, and that's a good thing. Not only are we interested in studying uh, the species that call the cave system home, we also want to know all about the species that live here on the ranch, on the surface as well. That's Brad Wiest, owner-operator of Natural Bridge Caverns and its surrounding land. Fish, as it turns out, round out a long list of creatures being studied here. And so we have, we've uh, conducted studies of the frogs and the toads here on the ranch, uh, on smaller uh, lizards and reptiles, snakes. Uh, we've studied the bats. Why, you may be asking? Well, healthy wildlife means that the land is in good shape, and the weeds are intent on keeping it that way. To do this, they elicited the help of Cody Craig, who specializes in aquatic biology. I think right now we're up to seven species. I wouldn't be surprised if we get, you know, 15 or so species in this area. He's taking a census of the fish population. It's a bigger one, this is a common carp. And this man knows his fish. This is a, uh, a huge gambuja, which is a uh, western mosquito fish. The amount, uh, yeah. type, and size of fish is important. Are these more, uh, you said, lake species or spring species? Or? Yeah, these are more lake species okay. just because of the flow conditions right now. Um, we may see some different species like after a rain, a big rainfall event or maybe a little bit closer to the actual springs. It's this info that drives what happens next. So let's say hypothetically we find some spring associated fishes that could change and and the the conservation measures of natural bridge caverns on, okay, what can we do to really preserve the spring flow, which is important to these spring associated fishes. So you can take conservation measures in that way, you know, that's one example. Turns out Cibolo Creek, at least this part of it, is pretty healthy. But that won't stop the Weasts from doing more research on what their property has to offer. We want to learn what we have so we can be better stewards of the land and their habitat, and then we want to share that. A lot of different kind of fish. There was, and I was impressed. Uh, Cody was just kind of rattling off the names. Yeah. This is this fish. And they're so little, how can you tell? Exactly. I, exactly, but they each have different kind of markings, and each one kind of represents how healthy that, that particular ecosystem is, whether it's you know spring-fed type fish or uh, more lake type fish. But uh, Cibolo Creek, you know, even in this drought, there was still water there, and there was still fish thriving. So it, it does. It's a good barometer of how healthy things are.